Hi there, today I'm going to show you how to make the Sofida Pigeon Harness. With this harness you can safely take your rescue pet pigeon outside without risking that it will get lost. Harnesses are often used for birds which would not be able to survive in the wild and are a great way to still off your bird outdoor time. My harness in particular is designed so that it can be used as a travel harness but also as a flight harness so that your pigeon can actually still enjoy flying outdoors. There are many reasons why some rescue pigeons can't be released anymore or why they can't fly outdoors without a harness while other pet birds can. But that is not what this video is about. There are plenty of other great videos online which do a great job in explaining this. This video is about making the Sofida Pigeon Harness. So let's get started. I have spent over a year working on this harness, the video tutorial and the written PDF tutorial. During this period I have tested several different designs and optimized it for both comfort and safety where needed. I would strongly recommend you to also watch the end of the video if you are planning to use any harness with your pigeon outside for additional safety tips. Do however keep in mind that no matter which harness or fly system you use, that taking your rescue or pet pigeon outside is 100% your own responsibility and at your own risk. Do note that there is also a PDF version of this tutorial, which can be found in the link in the description. This PDF is a detailed step by step tutorial on how to make the Sofida Pigeon Harness. The design of this harness is quite simple and easy to make. It consists out of two parts. One part is the belly strap which goes around the bird and the other part is the shoulder strap section which goes around the neck of the bird. All you need to make the Sofida Pigeon Harness is an old bra or multiple bras if you want to combine strap collars for example. You can of course use your own old bras, but you could also get some at a local thrift shop considering you would only be using the shoulder straps anyway. As for bra size, I would recommend to use at least a cup size of 75B to 85C European size, simply because the straps of these sizes end up are a bit longer. With smaller sizes you might end up with straps which are too short to make a harness. Next to this you also need some buckle clips which will be used to open and close the harness. These can be obtained online very easily for just a few dollars. I got 60 of them in different colors for less than 6 euros including delivery from Aliexpress. The ones I've used are probably the smallest available. The total width of the clip is about 15 mm. The length of the total clips together is about 3 cm or 30 mm and they have the perfect size to fit the bra strap. Here you can see a screenshot of the clips I've ordered. On the website they are often listed as 10 mm. This however refers to the internal slot for the bra straps. For this video I'm going to use this blue bra. All you need from the bra are these straps, the adjustment slider and these rings which are depending on the brand made from either plastic or metal. Next to this I will also be using this pink bow from this bra to decorate the harness. To ensure that you have enough shoulder strap length to make your harness, it is important that the bra straps consist out of one single section, which means that the connecting ring is directly attached to the back band of the bra like shown here. If you would for example have a bra which has the connecting ring in the middle of the bra straps, like shown here, then it is very likely that you will not be able to salvage enough strap length to make your harness. First thing we need to do now is taking measurements from your pigeon. I would recommend using a spare strap or a piece of lint instead of using the actual measuring tape. Simply because the measuring tape is harder to keep in place and it might actually freak out your pigeon. We will only need two measurements and I will show you both using this spare strap. First we'll take the strap and put it over one of the shoulders of the pigeon and we'll make sure that the end of the strap is past the wing pits of the pigeon like shown here. While keeping the other end of the strap in its place, you want to pull the rest of the strap over the front of your pigeon and mark the part of the center of the belly with your finger as shown here. Please do note that the exact measurement location depends on the pigeon's build and size and that you might need to experiment a bit with it to find the right size for your pigeon's build. This is simply due to the fact that there are lots of pigeon breeds which all come in different shapes and sizes. 
While still holding your finger on the mark location of the measurement strap, you will now need to measure the length of the strap and write down your measured length. As you can see, for Sophie I would need about 17 cm of shoulder strap length. Now I will do another measurement, but then around the pigeon underneath its wings. You will need to put the measurement length underneath both wings and then go all the way around the belly of the pigeon. Sophie looks a bit restless here, but this is because we had to reshoot these shots three times due to camera angle issues not clearly showing what was needed. And usually she is used to going outside when the harness is put on, so she is just expecting to go outside here now. Try to keep the measurement length in place when you have it all the way around your pigeon. This will make it easier to measure the length. Sophie made it quite convenient for us here by stepping out of the lint herself. We will now measure the length of the measurement lint and write down the desired length for lady use. As you can see here, I would need a belly band of about 21cm for Sophie. Do not start cutting anything just yet, because we will actually need additional strap length to make the harness. When moving on to harvesting our parts, we will first disconnect the shoulder straps from the backband of the bra, while leaving the straps and the rings intact. Do this by cutting the backband as demonstrated here. Next we'll need to cut the shoulder strap from the bra as close as possible to the cup. We'll need to repeat this process for the other strap. You should now have two equal length straps which we will be using to make the harness. For the next step we will remove the rings from the straps as demonstrated here. Repeat this process for the other strap and make sure you don't lose the rings because you will need them later. These rings are used as attachment ring for the leash. I personally always like to use one ring for the harness if they are made of metal and two rings if they are made out of plastic. You can easily test this by using a magnet for example. If you only need to use one ring for this harness or you want to use a different color ring, you can always store the other rings in your sewing box for future use. Just like I did with these pink ones which I will be using for my harness. A small tip in between, some fabric stores sell bra straps per meter, which is great if you already have some spare rings and adjustment sliders laying around from a previous harness. And if we're giving extra tips anyway, here's another one, don't forget to harvest other potential useful parts from the bra for your future projects. You can harvest the decorative bow from bras along with any other decorative parts like these lints for example. We are now ready to start making the harness, so to prepare get your two straps, one or two rings, a clip in the color of your choice and other possible decorations if desired. Now we will need to separate the two clip sections, because we will first be using the female clip parts to make the belly band of the harness. Bra straps often have an outside and inside slash soft side. It is important that you pay attention when attaching the clips, otherwise the belly band will be inside out when it's finished. Now we'll take the buckle clip and put the strap through it. And again, do make sure that the shiny side is facing the correct way. Next you want to pull the strap all the way through and put it through the adjustment slider. And do this on both sides of the slider, just like it was installed on the bra itself previously. As we've measured earlier, I need a belly band of about 21 cm for Sophie. But before I actually add the second clip, I will make sure that I have some additional headroom by making sure that the slider is set to about 2 cm from the buckle clip. This not only ensures that the belly band won't be too small if I make a mistake during sewing it, but it will also allow me to make the harness a bit bigger if Sophie gains a bit of weight for example. Now we will add the second clip and take the measurement for the final length of the belly band. However, do make sure to pay attention here, because it is easy to make a mistake if you are measuring from the wrong point. And of course, you should also make sure that the second buckle clip is facing the right way up. When measuring the length of your belly strap, 
you should not measure from the tip of the buckle clip, but actually from this point here. This because as shown here, the two clips will click into each other and thus possibly causing you to end up with a belly band which is too big if you would have measured from the tip of the clip. So instead, we're going to start measuring from here all the way till the end of the female clip. The belly band can be a bit bigger or longer, however you want to call it, because you will be able to make it smaller with the adjustment slider. But it should however not be any shorter than the measured size. As mentioned a few times, I will need a belly band of about 21cm for Sophie. If you already have made a harness for your pigeon previously, you can of course also use that harness for future reference when making new ones. When you have determined the correct size, it is time to cut off the excess part of the strap. However, do make sure that you leave an additional centimeter or two, which you can use to sew it together. You will now need to put the buckle clip back on the strap if it has fallen off while cutting off the excess part. And it's also highly recommended to measure and readjust the belly band one more time before finalizing it by sewing it together. Next you will need to take the end of the belly band you just cut off and fold it inwards as demonstrated here. This will ensure that the strap won't unravel easily if your pigeon for example tries to preen it. And now we will need to sew those three layers together with a strong bond. You can do this either by hand or with a sewing machine. I personally would recommend doing this with a sewing machine though. My personal recommendation is to sew a square and then place an X inside it. Since I'm not a sewing specialist at all, I don't know if there is an official name for this, but I have made a crude illustration to demonstrate what I meant. I don't even know if it's absolutely necessary to make a bond this strong, but I just don't want to take any risks when it comes to the safety of Sophie. Once I'm done sewing, I always want to stress test the seams I've just made to ensure they don't come loose. I would recommend doing the same and also doing this for the other end of the strap to which the adjustment slider is connected. Once the belly band is finished, you can either measure it once more to confirm it has the correct size or you can compare it with another one if you have already made one previously. If you have made several differently colored harnesses, you can of course also combine the belly band with a different main harness to create different color combinations. The main harness will need two loops through which you will put the belly band. However, one of these loops can be cheated so to speak by cutting off the adjustment slider from the other brass strap. This way you will only need to worry about making one loop. Which cannot only save you time, it will also reduce the risk of making measurement errors. So we will now take the other bra strap and cut off the adjustment slider as demonstrated here. Do make sure though that you do not damage the strap itself. When the harness is finished, we will use this loop for the semi-permanent installation of the belly band. It can be a bit tight depending on the strap you've used, but that doesn't matter for this side of the harness. As measured previously, I will need the main harness to be about 17 cm for Sophie. However, I also need an additional 3 to 4 cm to make the top loop which will go on the back of Sophie, which we will use to put the belly band through. Do keep in mind though that if you do not have a loop at the bottom already, that you will need another centimeter or two to create that loop yourself. Once you've measured it to the correct length, plus the additional 3 to 4 cm, cut off the excess strap part. Do make sure though that you do not accidentally cut off the part with the loop which we have created earlier by removing the slider. Do not throw this new part away though, because we will need it for the harness. Just to be sure, I measured mine again to ensure that it is indeed around 21 cm and thus 17 cm plus the additional 3 to 4 cm. Now we will take the part we just cut off and sew it to the main strap just above the bottom loop. The second strap will need to be sewn to the main strap a bit rotated to the side. The exact angle doesn't really matter, but it should look a bit like this. This is how it should look like after you've sewn them together. For now I have only done one pass, but I will do another one later. Now we will first slide the leash connection ring onto the harness and while doing so, do make sure it is on the correct side of the harness, which should be the shiny side. Make sure to slide it all the way down 
and once again align the two straps as demonstrated here. We will then need to sew them together again, but this time just above the leash connection ring. Do however make sure that the strap is still rotated a bit as shown before. Now that the second side is done, I'm going to do another pass at the bottom side of the ring just to make sure it absolutely can't come loose. After I've done two passes, I will cut off any additional thread to ensure that Sophie can't pull it out. And as you can see here, I've made two passes at the bottom and one at the top, which is more than enough. We are now going to prepare the second loop which will go on the back of Sophie. We know that the harness needs to be 70 cm, so that is where we will make the fold to create a loop. If you previously have already made a perfectly fitting harness for your pigeon, you can of course also use this harness to compare the size of your new one. I would recommend to put a pin in the folded section to ensure that it stays in place while preparing the rest of the harness. If you want to be absolutely sure, then this would be the perfect time to double check the length of your harness before proceeding. Now we're going to make the main loop which goes around the neck of the pigeon. However, do make sure when making this loop that you are being a bit generous and that you don't make the loop too tight, because you obviously don't want to hurt or even choke your pigeon with the harness. How big you will need to make this loop also depends on the build of your pigeon of course. If you are in doubt, I would recommend starting a bit on the bigger side and then just making another harness if it does turn out to be too big. It's no shame if you need to try and experiment a bit before finding the perfect fit for your pigeon. As you can see here, I'm using a previously made harness for Sophie as a reference for the size of the main loop. And generally, this size should work fine for similar breed pigeons. Once you have determined the correct size, you can cut off the excess part of the strap. Do make sure to cut it a bit in an angle so you can put it in between the two layers of the main loop without sticking out as shown here. As you can see, the new harness I'm making matches the reference one I've made previously quite well. I will once more make sure the straps line up and overlap nicely. And then I will make the same X inside a square pattern again to finalize this part of the harness. I'm removing the pin after completing it and then I'm going to pull as hard as I can in all directions to ensure that the stitches won't come loose at all. I absolutely do not care if it would break now, because I rather have it happen now instead of outside where it could potentially put Sophie in harm's way. And now we have basically finished the second and final part of the harness to have a fully functional and usable harness for your pigeon. To complete the harness you will now need to install the belly band at the smaller bottom loop as demonstrated here. This is the loop which is closest to the leash connection ring. During normal use you will never need to remove the belly band from this loop, so it doesn't matter if this is a bit of a tighter fit either. It's even better if it's a tight fit, because then it also means that it is less likely that your pigeon will get stuck in the loop with his or her nails while walking or landing. And there we have it, a nice new harness in the cute colors baby blue and pink for our beloved Sophie. As you can see it's nearly identical to her usual white harness. The harness is now ready to use. However, I still want to add a small bow to it as additional decoration for this harness. I will just add the bow by hand, because like mentioned earlier, I'm not a sewing expert at all. If you can however do this with a sewing machine, then I would obviously recommend doing so. Just make sure that if you install decorations like this, that your pigeon will not be able to pull them off at all. And there you have it, the completed harness with bow. I will demonstrate how to put it on your pigeon soon, but first I want to show you some other colors I've made previously. Sophie has a harness for about every occasion. And as you can see, she also has two white ones, because that's the one we use most. Simply because the white one is much less noticeable due to its color when she is wearing it outside. However, often when we are going outside with Sophie, we will show her different harnesses and she will pick the one she wants to wear that day. 
This most leads to white one, but funny enough, the one I've made in this video has become her second favorite. Yes, this narration is due to lack of time recorded much later than I initially planned. I will now first explain with a dry run without Sophie how you will need to put a harness on your pigeon, because it can be a bit difficult to see on camera with Sophie. After that I will demonstrate it again but with Sophie. You will first put this part around the neck of your pigeon while leaving this loop empty. Then you take this clip, carefully put it underneath the wing and through this loop. Then pass it underneath the other wing and once you've reached the other clip again, you click them together. So this is basically how your pigeon will wear the harness. I will now demonstrate how I put the harness on on Sophie. Please do yet again keep in mind that Sophie is a very calm and well trained pigeon and we don't really have to hold her down that much. Other pigeons might require you to hold them against your body or they might require other approaches to put the harness on. However, never ever force or stress your pigeon when using the harness. Make sure they get used to it properly over time and slowly. And no, it isn't always this easy with Sophie either. Some days she will just stand absolutely still until I'm done and other days she'll struggle like her life depends on it. And other times she's just super excited when the harness is being put on because she knows that it means that we're going outside or on a road trip again. As you can see it only took me about 40 seconds to put the harness on Sophie and I only had to put her back on the pillow once without holding her down at all. However these results may vary per pigeon and personality of the pigeon and per day and the mood of the pigeon. The next thing you should do when you have put the harness on your pigeon is to make sure the belly band isn't either too loose or too tight. As demonstrated here I would personally recommend that you can still fit one or two fingers between the belly band and your pigeon without being too tight. If the belly band is either too loose or too tight you can adjust it with adjustment slider. Removing the harness is also quite simple. I would recommend to just disconnect the buckle clip, then carefully pulling back the strap from underneath the wing and then lifting the harness from the front to the back over the head of your pigeon and then letting your pigeon walk out of the harness on its own as shown here. And after your pigeon has walked out of the harness, you can remove the strap from the back loop so the harness is ready for the next trip again. When going on a trip, all you have to do is put the harness on, connect your leash and you're ready to go on an adventure with your pigeon. The main leash we're using for Sophie is just a normal but slightly modified retractable dog leash. As you can see I have added some facial modifications which don't really matter for the functionality. I have however also made a belt clip which makes it much easier to use the leash with Sophie when I'm walking outside with Sophie alone. My belt clip is obviously 3D printed, but you could basically screw or glue any other belt clip or mechanism to your retractable leash to make it a lot easier to work with your leash and still have both hands free for your pigeon. For me one of the added benefits of this belt clip is that I can easily extend the leash while it's still attached to me. This means I don't have to worry where to put the leash handle. And like said before, I still have both hands free to interact with Sophie while she's doing her flying exercises for example. At the same time this belt clip also enables me to quickly retract the leash in a controlled manner with just one hand if needed or when moving to another area with Sophie. So this leash system is great in trying to keep Sophie as safe as possible while still providing her lots of outdoor time. However there is still an important and even crucial part of this leash system which I haven't shown you yet. And unfortunately this is also what is missing in many of the other commercially available leash systems. This is basically a bungee like elastic cord of 1.2 meters which can stretch up all the way to 2.9 meters. The reason that this section is so important is that your pigeon won't get to an abrupt stop mid-flight when he or she has reached the end of the line. 
but instead the resistance will gradually increase letting your bird know that he or she is reaching the end of the leash and due to this, this soft break will prevent possible severe injuries to your pigeon. You might think you won't need a soft break, but trust me, you will. It is in the best interest for your bird. Sometimes the leash of your pigeon can accidentally and unexpectedly get caught by something. Like you can see in the slow motion footage of Sophie here. And then the soft break will definitely prevent injuries to your pigeon. In this footage, Sophie's leash accidentally got stuck in some plants. And due to the soft break, she did not get to an abrupt stop. And at the same time, I had enough time to help her. Usually when purchasing these retractable dog leashes, it has a thin line like this one as the main line and the wider section like this, which usually has the clip attached to it. Unfortunately, I don't have the entire end section anymore because I helped one of my neighbors by fixing their broken dog leash with it. But I can still easily demonstrate how I modified mine with this remaining piece. All I did was cutting off the wider section, then I removed the wider section from the main line as shown here. And then I attached a thick key ring to where the wider section of the leash was connected previously. To this ring I can now connect Sophie's soft break line which I will also show you how to make shortly. Often I also like to use this key ring to store Sophie's leg bands when they are not in use. So when we are going outside all I have to get is the retractable leash and I have everything we need, aside from the harness itself of course. The leash shown here is about 10 to 15 meters, I'm not sure anymore, but we also have another heavier modified one which has a total length of about 45 meters. Most of the time a leash of 10 to 12 meters would be more than enough though for a day in the park with your pigeon. One thing to consider though is that you want to keep the leash as lightweight as possible. Because if it's too heavy it will definitely restrict the movement of your pigeon. The soft brake I'm using for Sophie is basically just an elastic cord which has some rubber like elastic on the inside and cotton or whatever it is on the outside. I just bought 5 meters of these on Aliexpress for about 4 dollars including shipping and I used a 2 mm diameter one. The reason I've chosen these cords is that the cotton like outer shell will ensure that they won't snap easily. And I also just used 2 of these quick release clips to connect the soft brake to the harness and main leash. I'm still looking into something smaller but still reliable, simply because I would like to reduce the weight a bit more. However, currently for Sophie these are working out just fine. If you can however find something smaller while still being reliable, I would recommend using a smaller clip. When going outside with your pigeon, and no matter if you would use Sophie's harness, a different harness, flight pens, a short or a long leash, I would always recommend to get custom leg bands made for your pigeon. Even if your pigeon already has permanent leg bands from the breeder, I would still recommend getting custom ones with for example your phone number on them. Sophie is always wearing two custom leg bands when we're going outside. One has her name on it and the other one has a way to contact us on it. Just in case Sophie gets lost and someone finds her. Of course you're hoping that nothing will go wrong, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I can personally recommend ringsforwings.com, we've always ordered Sophie's leg bands from them, they have a good price, are custom made, good quality and fast worldwide delivery. And no, this is not a sponsorship or endorsement at all, this is my own personal opinion. Obviously we all hope that nothing will ever go wrong, but with these leg bands, there is a higher chance that your pigeon will actually make it back home, in case something might happen while you're outside with your pigeon. This video does not include a tutorial on how to teach your pigeon to use the harness, simply because there are a lot of tutorials for harness training online already. Neither does this video include a tutorial on how to train your pigeon to ride along with you on your bicycle, to go on trips with you to stores or how to get your pigeon used to public transport and or crowded areas. I will however consider making a few of those videos in the future if there is enough interest for them. So let me know in the comments below if you would like me to make some tutorials on these topics. I will however share some of the in my opinion most important tips when it comes to taking your pigeon outside. Taking your rescue or pet pigeon outside also comes with quite a bit of responsibility and risk. Knowing the dangers and what to look out for is very important. Even while just sitting in the park on the ground with your pigeon, 
there can be quite a lot of dangers around you for your pigeon. One very important sound to learn, memorize and take seriously is the pigeon danger call as we like to call it. This is a very distinctive sound pigeons will often make when they actually see something they might consider as a threat. I recorded Sophie's danger call on a different occasion and this is how it sounds. I will play it a few more times just so that you get the idea. If your pigeon makes this call just make sure to take it seriously and to be extra cautious about your surroundings including the sky above you. Because it might very well be that your pigeon has spotted a predatory bird in the air or nearby like a falcon, eagle or any other predatory bird in your area that might be dangerous to your pigeon. It would unfortunately not be the first time that a pigeon or parrot taken outside for a walk would get swooped away by a predatory bird. And yes, you might be thinking my pigeon is on a leash anyway so it would be safe. No. The strike alone of a predatory bird could already seriously injure or even kill your pigeon instantly. Therefore it is highly recommended to avoid hunting areas of predatory birds like forests and large nature parks. I would also recommend you to do some research about which predatory birds you can expect in your area and which places you should avoid with pet birds. And even if you are in an area where you would or should not expect any predatory birds, you should still pay close attention to your surroundings, the trees and the sky at all times to ensure the safety of your pigeon. Even if there aren't any predatory birds around you at the moment, there are still plenty of other possible dangers for your pigeon. Like for example people walking past you while walking their dog. Or even worse, a dog running around without a leash while you are sitting somewhere with your pigeon. You should also be very cautious at all times that other animals like dogs and cats for example can't get a hold of your pigeon either. And you should of course also be a bit more cautious when there are playing children around which might get a bit too excited because you have a bird on your lap for example. There are however also health risks for your pigeon which might seem less obvious. I would for example not recommend to let your pigeon either drink or bathe in any water or puddle outside, because your pigeon might actually contract a disease from wild birds this way. The same goes for letting your pigeon socialize with a group of feral pigeons and for letting your pigeon share food with feral pigeons. All these types of direct or indirect contact with wild birds could cause your pigeon to get sick one way or another. I'm assuming that you care as much about your pigeon as we care about Sophie, right? And thus that you are already well aware of the potential risks of everything you could transfer to your pigeon's feathers via your hands, like soap, grease, perfumes and even nicotine if you are a smoker for example. Obviously all these things could be harmful for your pigeon if it gets on its feathers, especially if your pigeon then prints itself afterwards. Therefore I would strongly recommend not to let everyone you meet on the streets pet your pigeon. We often get requests from random people if they can pet Sophie, and most of the time we will just say no, simply because we do not know what they have just touched before we met them. It could be nothing serious, but they could just as well just eat fries with their hands and thus potentially transfer fats and salts onto Sophie's feathers. Or they could just a few seconds ago throw away a cigarette which means that they could potentially transfer nicotine onto Sophie's feathers. Therefore we often won't let random people pet Sophie. And let's be honest, your pigeon is your buddy, best friend, pet or however you wanna call it and not some petting zoo attraction. And yes, sometimes we do make an exception for kids for example, but obviously only do this if your pigeon likes it and or is into it. We then tell them to use the top of their finger like you can see here. Doing this often automatically turns into more gentle touching and it also lowers the risks of transferring icky stuff onto your pigeon's feathers. Weather and temperature is also a very important aspect when it comes to taking your pigeon outside. There are websites which claim that pet pigeons will get sick instantly from draft or colder weather alone. It is however not that simple. I will try to keep it as short and simple as possible though. It is for example not the cold which could make your pigeon sick, but the sudden changes in the temperature when moving from inside to outside with a large temperature difference. Therefore it is also not recommended to go in and out stores with your pigeon all day long during hot summer days, 
Because those stores often have the AC cranked up during hot days, you will then expose your pigeon to certain temperature changes every time you go in and out of the store. Obviously, when it looks like this outside, you should not take your pigeon outside for a walk. I would not recommend taking your pigeon outside during rainy days either. Personally, we, Sophie included, don't mind a mild rain during a warm summer day. But with lower temperatures or any other type of rain, we will not take Sophie outside. Neither should you take your pigeon outside during strong winds and you should definitely not let your pigeon fly outside during weather like this. It is also important to note that pigeons have poor sight at night. Therefore it is recommended to make sure that you and your pigeon are safely inside again before it gets dark outside. During the winter months Sophie doesn't come outside much, simply because we don't want to expose her to the cold if it's not absolutely necessary. It however does not mean that you can take your pigeon outside in the winter at all. You could for example keep your pigeon warm in your jacket with just its head sticking out for a brief trip if needed. And if you would really like to let your pigeon experience the snow, then it should be fine if it isn't for an extended time. Do however note that it is important that you should only do this if your pigeon is otherwise healthy and fit. Sophie really likes playing in the snow, but we will only allow it once or twice a year for a short period to make sure she won't get sick. Sophie's vet told us that any temperature above freezing temperature should be just fine for Sophie to go outside. We personally however prefer a minimum outdoor temperature of 10 degrees celsius though. It is however not only the cold weather which could be a problem for your pigeon, warm weather could just as well be a problem for your pigeon if you don't provide your pigeon with enough opportunity to escape from the sun to cool down and regulate its body temperature. We have bought this baby umbrella intended for strollers for Sophie, so that we always have a way to provide Sophie with some shade when needed. I would also like to recommend to bring along some food and fresh water for your pigeon when taking your pigeon with you on longer trips. The water bottle we are using for Sophie is officially intended for dogs, but works perfectly for pigeons as well. Next I would recommend that your pigeon at least understands the step on and step off commands. Step off. The stay, stay put or wait command and that your pigeon is recall trained before taking your pigeon outside with the harness. And it's obviously very important that there already is a very strong bond and level of trust between you and your pigeon before even thinking about taking your pigeon outside. I won't be making a video about these topics though because there are yet again plenty of good videos about this topic available on YouTube already. And yes, training your pigeon like this will take some time and dedication, but it is well worth it, both for you and for the safety of your pigeon. You should obviously avoid situations where your pigeon's leash might get tangled into trees and objects etc. It is very important to only fly on open fields with your pigeon until you are very sure that your pigeon is well trained enough and that you can be absolutely certain that he or she will not fly into bushes or even trees. One of the only real flaws so to speak this harness has, is that it can sometimes happen that your pigeon's foot can get caught by the clip or the ring of the harness while landing or walking. Due to the nature of the design, this is nearly impossible to avoid. However, we only had this happen a few times with Sophie and it didn't cause any issues at all. We just helped her by getting her foot out of the ring if she didn't already manage to do it herself and that's it. It is however something to pay attention to especially when your pigeon is just starting out with the harness and or leash system. When this happens to Sophie, it only looks a bit clumsy while she's landing, she is still perfectly able to land safely. Sophie's harness is designed as a travel and flight harness, meaning it is not very suited for walking for your pigeon in the default configuration so to speak. As you can see, the leash could cause your pigeon to have difficulties while walking. The reason why I have chosen to place the leash connector on the front anyway instead of on the back of the pigeon is simple. When the leash is connected here, there is almost no possibility of the leash getting tangled in the wings of your pigeon while he or she is flying, which could actually result in major injuries or worse.
You could, however, make a second soft brake, which you can connect to the back loop of the harness, then connect that one to your main leash, after which you can disconnect your first soft brake again. You now have basically put the harness in walking mode for if you are chilling in a park with your pigeon for a while for example. Walking in this configuration is much easier for your pigeon. Do note that this configuration is not recommended if you are unsure if your pigeon would suddenly start flying around or not. I try to cover as much as possible, but obviously I can't make this video endlessly long either. Most other things should or would be common sense when taking your non-releasable pet pigeon outside. I would yet again like to urge you to do some additional research if you aren't aware of all the potential risks of taking your pigeon outside already. I will however once more give a small summary of the main points. Make sure your pigeon is used to the harness before going outside. Always use a soft brake, even if you are not using the retractable leash. Your pigeon should be recall trained and at least know the step on step off commands. Know which local predatory animals you can expect and where you can expect them in your area. Always be aware of your surroundings. Don't let your pigeon get into contact with other wild birds or their food and water sources. Take weather conditions into account when considering to go outside with your pigeon. Make sure your pigeon can get stuck somewhere with its leash. Always check the harness, leash and soft brake for defects before every departure. Use personalized leg bands for additional safety. And always take food and water along for your pigeon on longer trips. And of course, I do have to say this again. Do realize that taking your pet and or rescue pigeon outside, either with or without the Sofita pigeon harness, is 100% at your own risk and responsibility. Lastly, I would like to give special thanks to some people who have helped me and Sophie with this long and extensive project. Firstly, of course, my wife Cynthia for all her help filming and testing. Jacob for his help during the testing period, his insights and feedback about the harness. Jordi for his feedback on both the harness and video production. My mother Monique as a non-bird owning person for her feedback about the sewing instructions I've made for this video. And Mitchell for his feedback on the video and if everything has been explained well enough for beginners, considering he isn't a bird owner and doesn't do any sewing himself either. And of course, last but not least, the online bird community and Sophie's online friends slash vlog for their amazing interest in Sophie's custom harness and their patience while they had to wait for this video to be finished. Thank you for watching, leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe if you like to see more content like this.